Samuel Eto'o is the greatest African footballer to ever play the beautiful game. When it comes to the eye test, he passes with flying colours. When it comes to stats, he has the numbers to satisfy the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet merchants. His back-to-back -back trebles with two different clubs is an achievement that stands alone. And perhaps most importantly, he has delivered for his country on multiple occasions. This is a true big game player. We hear a lot of talk about complete strikers in today's day and age, but Eto dwarfs them all. He had the pace to leave you in the dust, the dribbling ability to send defenders shops to go and buy bread, the strength of one indomitable lion, and a ruthless instinct in front of goal. Eto knew he was the guy from early, that's why he was going bold by choice even in his teenage years. That's why when they asked him what's it like to play alongside Messi, he corrected them to say no, Messi played alongside him. And back in them Barcelona days, I fully hear it, he was right. Those of you with substantial ball knowledge will actually know that he started at Real Madrid. So how did they fumble and let this guy become a Barcelona legend? Well grab your plantain chips and your super malt, I'm here to show you the story of young Eto all the way through to the bag collecting Eto in Russia and Qatar. Samuel Eto'o was born in Cameroon in 1981, and after impressing at the Kaji Sports Academy, he joined Real Madrid's youth academy at the age of 16. Although he was already showing the ice-cold composure of an experienced striker, Real Madrid were relegated to the third tier, where non-EU players were not allowed, so he was chucked on loan to various Spanish clubs to develop his game. His time at Leganes and Espanyol were a little difficult, but when he touched down in Mallorca in 2000, it seemed like the teenager had finally found his home. Mallorca clearly felt that they had to cover the gem, smashing their club record to sign him permanently for £4.4 million. Pounds. Such was his mentality back then that he didn't care much for Madrid's money in those days. He just wanted to ball out. In fact, this guy went out of his way to pay for the meals of all the travelling fans for the Copa del Rey final that he scored a bracing for them to win. All because he appreciated how much he supported them and welcomed them to the club. His status was booming as he was the youngest player at the 1998 World Cup and then won back-to-back -back Afcons with Cameroon in 2000 and in 2002 wearing the iconic vest kit. To add to the small matter of an Olympic gold medal too. Back in Spain against his old club Madrid, he made sure to give them an early taste of just how big a mistake they they made, crushing them 5-1 away from home and then beating them again away the next season to deny them the chance to win the league. After 70 goals in 165 games, it was time for Samuel to move on and haunt Madrid even more. In 2004, Mallorca's all-time leading goal scorer signed for Barcelona after Madrid and Florentino Perez's offer to sign him back permanently including him going out on loan yet again. Eto told Madrid to charge it and slapped 25 goals on their way to winning the league title. Now I did some digging and I found out that Diego Forlan won the golden boot or Pichichi as it's known in Spain despite also scoring 25 goals because the league decided that this goal that bounced off Eto was still counted as Deco's goal because he's the one that shot. Racismo no? Well Eto was certainly livid about it. His controversial side was highlighted even further as he started charting explicit things about Madrid during their title winning celebrations. No drama though, he took his anger out on opponents the following season as he went on to get 26 league goals this time and finish as outright top scorer. Any ego he seemed to be developing was backed up by his ability to manufacture goals out of thin air every single week. You give this guy one millimeter of space, bang, you're out. Look at these goals and tell me he wouldn't be the best striker in the world if he was playing today. As if these league goals weren't enough, he went and topped it with a mammoth Champions League campaign where he almost single-handedly decided the final against Arsenal after getting Jens Lehmann sent off before going on to score in their 2-1 win to lift the trophy for the first time in his career. He was stacking up African Player of the Year awards like they were Fanta bottles until he was unfortunately hampered by injuries in the following two seasons. Even though he was still delivering an excellent goal return, falling outs with Raya Card and others at the club was starting to cause some problems. Problems that Pep Guardiola immediately confronted when he arrived before the 2008 season, announcing that Ronaldinho, Deco and Eto were no longer part of his plans. Dino and Deco were gone, but whatever level of stubborn we know Pep to be, Eto was 10 times that. Staying by force and breaking the record for the fastest hat trick in the club's history, and then a couple games later he went in back four goals in one half. This brother basically told Pep to shh and let him score goals in peace like some African uncle. He fired his way into Barca's all-time top 10 goal scorers list, all while making it actively clear that he didn't appreciate how Pep treated him in comparison to his Caucasian teammates. In the end, despite the beef, he'd go on to back the opening goal of the 9 Champions League final against United on their way to a sextuple of six trophies as he'd form a devastating link-up with Thierry Henry and Lionel Messi. The trio would score exactly 100 goals between them that season and were moving through defences like one unstoppable force of nature. This was now Eto's third league title and second Champions League with the club that truly catapulted into stardom. Naturally though, with his relationship deteriorating with Pep, Guardiola decided that it was time to part ways on the highest of highs. In 2009, after Barcelona acquired the services of Zlatan Ibrahimovic, someone else has done a video on if you want to go through the archives, Eto went the opposite direction to Inter. There were plenty of comparisons between the two strikers, but after scoring on his Supercoppa Italiana debut and his Serie A debut, he made it clear that he doesn't care about whether guys think he's better than Zlatan or not. He said he is Samuel Eto. Although he only collected 12 league goals, he was cooking in the cups, as they'd lift the Coppa Italia and reach the Champions League final thanks to some of his masterclasses along the way. Confidence was high as Inter sealed the league title, and so in the Champions League final, he 
set up Melito to score as Inter went on to beat Bayern 2-0 and make Eto'o the first player in history to win back-to-back -back trebles with two different clubs. He was back to bagging in Super Coppa Italiana finals again against Roma and then another winner in the Club World Cup final against TP Mazembe to make it their fifth trophy of the year and secure Eto'o fifth place in the Ballon d'Or rankings. Whatever debates he was involved in with Ibra seemed irrelevant now as Inter president Massimo Moratti called it his best piece of business ever. He scored 37 goals that season which was a career high for him but right as Eto'o was peaking he made what was the strangest career move we had ever seen at that time. Now that he'd achieved everything there is to win in club football, he signed for Anzi Mahash in 2011 in a deal that would make him the world's highest paid player in history as the Russian team randomly had that year where they seemed to be the richest club on earth. Although he was now in his 30s, he was still capable of bagging goal after goal after goal, making these defenders in Russia look like they were backing vodka before matches. After two seasons, he'd scored 34 goals in all comps, but the Russian oil money from owner Kerimov seemed to dry up, the project was done and they listed up all their superstars for sale. But from one Russian oil club, to another, he went on to sign for Chelsea in August 2013 to link up with Jose Mourinho again. After his former boss joked about Eto'o's old age, he went and dunked a hat-trick on United's head top before doing that old man celebration to remind guys that this old dog has still got it. He scored a respectable 12 goals in his 35 games in all comps as a backup striker that was dealing with little injuries here and there. But his contract wasn't renewed, so he ended his spell in England with Everton, scoring a header in his debut against the same Chelsea team that he had just left. He scored a fantastic brace against Burnley with a bullet header and a finesse from outside the box that had Everton fans wondering just how they had this brother at their club, even at his current age. Unfortunately, he wouldn't join them for a crazy Europa League run because in January 2015, it was time to move again. Eto'o was now back in Italy with Sampdoria, but this trip was relatively short-lived as he'd only scored two goals for the club before heading off to Turkey with Antalya score. Now, many people take trips to Turkey to revive their hairline, but well, this Turkey move had the same impact on his career as he was now moving like a lion reborn, passing on weak defenders to hit 20 goals in his first season like he was back in his 20s. Once you have that natural goal-scoring instinct, you never lose it. He was adored so much that when the manager lost his job, they lobbed this guy to play a manager role to just do whatever he likes. People think he was just some pace merchant, but this guy could dribble with the ball faster than many players can sprint without him. He had an almost identical run the next year with 18 goals in the 2016-17 season before a stop-start final year at the club saw him depart to rivals Konyaspor. Unfortunately, despite some nice goals, he wasn't able to replicate those insane numbers that he did in multiple leagues around the world and so he decided to take one last trip to Qatar for a season. Again, he had no trouble scoring goals and he stuck out like a sore thumb the way he was just bagging. But alas, in 2019, he decided that it was officially time to hang up his boots. Through all this time, I've just briefly touched upon the surface of what this guy was achieving with Cameroon. Some of the goals this guy scored for his national team throughout various World Cups and AFCONs make it almost impossible to argue the case for anyone else to be the greatest African player of all time. Not only is he Cameroon's all-time top goal scorer, but he's the all-time AFCON top scorer and four times African player of the year. While others rely on their club accolades to get them into these debates, there are no gaps in Samuel Eto'o's CV. Club football, international football, stats, longevity, eye test, global influence, Samuel Eto'o dominates in every department. Obviously, we've known for years he's got a bit of a hothead, most recently after he volleyed some random journalists at the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. But the fact he's even the president of the Cameroon Football Federation shows just how much he's respected and idolised in his country. He was a man who refused to back down in the face of racism or any adversity that would come his way. Instead, doing his talking on the pitch with goals upon goals. If this is your first time really watching Eto'o before the Barca days, hopefully you learned something new today. If you did, leave a like on the video, comment if you think he's Africa's greatest player ever, and subscribe for new new football history lessons every Monday. Class dismissed. Bosh.